96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Good morning and welcome to Garden Radio AM. Today is Mash Up Wednesday. And of course, if it's Mash Up Wednesday, I have Aaron Green with me. Right? Aaron Green with me. Apparently started too early. And we're going to have a, uh, have a conversation, right? We're going to analyze the news, what is trending. But before we start with that, I, can you hear me with my mic there, producer? Because everything's... Okay, good. Before we start, we're going to start reading this, right? Bahamas, let's celebrate 242 Day. On Friday, this and every 24th of February, the 24th day of the second month, show your bohemian pride, fly your bohemian flags, wear your bohemian flag colors, eat bohemian food, create and listen to bohemian music, donate in sequence of 242, do something 242 times or 2.42 times, etc., uh, merchants consider pricing items at two dollars and forty two cents or twenty four dollars and twenty cents or two hundred and forty two dollars anything like that etc right so we just want to have fun let's have fun and of course whatever you do whatever you record we want you to hashtag it two four two day or hashtag celebrate Bahamas and that's what we're doing for Friday and we want all the civic groups and all the organizations to do that so what is trending in the news which I'm going to prick Aaron Breen about is the headline which is the PM's uh, immediate action on Shantytown would create crisis of the homeless. Um, let me read that again. I'm going to read the quote to you, right? And this is where the conversation is going to start, right? PM, this is the PM speaking, right? Immediate action on Shantytowns would create crisis of homelessness, right? Just recently, we know that the Supreme Court um, has done a ruling. And this is the response to that ruling, right? I'm going to read what the, the, the article says, right? Though a Supreme Court judge has cleared the way for the government to begin demolishing of, of shanty towns, if it is so chooses, Prime Minister Philip Davis indicated that this is not a move anyone should expect any time in the immediate future, given the complexities involved in such an action. Answering the question at the closing press conference, of the 44th CARICOM Heads of Government meeting at the Bahama on Friday evening, Davis said the removal of the injunction was to enable the government to have as many options <laughs> as it could <laughs> to deal with this issue. That has become quite a hot topic in the country today, and it goes in further detail regarding that, right? Mm -hmm. So this is where I'm going to start the discussion, because I know the minister of immigration as doing rounds because we have a, let me see what red note says, right? underline it. We have a nationally, national policy framework for immigration mm -hmm. and that needs to be explained. And of course, uh, this government with their transparency and trying to explain it, you see that the minister's now going in detail and explain it to the Bohemian public regarding that. And we're hoping to have him on the show on Friday to explain this national framework. Mm -hmm. But this is what I want to put to you, Aaron. This is a, what I want us to hash out and go in details on. I thought the shanty town is going to be bulldozed within two, three months. Diane looks like it's going to happen. I mean, after hearing the Prime Minister's address on the Sunday evening, right, one would have assumed that there would be immediate action, right? There was like an urgency in his presentation, in his tone, in the language that he used, it suggests that they were prepared, like that, that they were prepared to act yes. right away. Yes. That was the that they were eager to act right. Right, right away. That's the national address to the Bahamian people. Like you say, at the closing of the uh, 44th CARICOM heads of government meeting, though, the tone is decidedly different, right? In fact, the tone is don't expect, like I'm preparing you. Yes. Like I'm letting you know right letting now. Letting you know from now. Don't expect immediate action because. And what I infer, right, versus imply what I infer. Yes, that's what right? I'm going to tease you and bring that out any minute, what you infer. That there are a number of uh, legal procedures and policies that have to be adhered to in this process. Stop right there, because I need you to explain that to me and, of course, the listening audience. What type of thing are you talking about could be... But you can't, you can't just throw people... You can't just put people on the road. Which means I can't just throw people on the road. The government... 
So no, I, no. I, I want to know what talk, you mean. I like to talk about the government having a responsibility, right? Okay. Um, the government has a degree of responsibility. You can't just put people on the road. You can't evict them without having a plan, without even at the very least being able to refer them to places where they should be able to find housing. And that much is reflected in the commentary from uh, former Minister Dion Folks. Okay. Sp speaking to the committee, right? Aaron. So, Aaron? Yes. Let's talk Abaco. Because we know that whatever action is going to happen, it's going to start in Abaco. Right? right. I, 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 am I safe to say that? Or are we going to continue to start in New Providence and the Family Island? I think the Abaco is going to be the first I th I district think, that we're going to I think it's on. not unreasonable to assume mm. or to presume that Abaco will be the first space, right? But I don't know. See, because the particular issue that Abaco presents is the pace of development going on I in Abaco. I reached it yet. You just pre preempting everything. I, saw I want to analyze Abaco. Yeah. Because we know now, first I want to accept that Abaco is where we're going to start off. Right? All right. And we're already understanding by what the Prime Minister said, you don't expect immediate action. Because certain protocols and procedures, because we have a government who does responsible things, must be put in place. And I want to hash out with you. Name me one or two of these responsible things that should be put in place, and then we apply it to Abaco. Abaco has a housing crisis. Right. Right? There is a need for housing for construction persons, for residents who want to return home to Abaco. Mm -hmm. Now we have a shanty town issue there. Not a crisis, but a shanty town issue there. If the government moves to correct the shanty town issue there, mm -hmm. right, how would that impact the residents living there? Well, before that, how would they move, right? Abaco, we presume, would have been the first place. I presume they were already in this process. I presumed that the presence of the domes being used as temporary structures was an, in an attempt to address the housing crisis in Abaco immediately prior, I mean, immediately post Dorian. I presume that those domes were not just for residents who remained in Abaco, whose homes were destroyed, for residents who wanted to return to Abaco to, to, to manage their properties and, and their homes that may have been destroyed, but also for construction workers that were coming to Abaco to provide the labor to restore homes that were destroyed. Wait, you're trying to say that we may have to bring back the dooms? To First of all, what I'm saying is... The same that, dooms they get rid of and criticize the last government? The, what I'm saying is I thought that's what the domes were for. That's why I was shocked that they were deconstructing the domes. What I have since learned, I may be incorrect, mm -hmm. is that not all of the domes were deconstructed. What? What I've heard in the media of late is that there are still some people living in domes. Well, now that may I mean, be, on their private property, you mean? I, I, I have no idea because we never got a clear indicator of what the dome policy was, right? Like nobody ever said, listen, you can live in a dome on this p public property that has been prepared for domes or you can have access to a dome which you can then take to your own property and construct it there. We have no idea what the dome policy was, what the dome protocols were, but people are, a couple of people in the media have indicated that there are still people living in domes. Why were the domes deconstructed if you didn't have a workable temporary housing program in play? Why weren't the, first of all, why weren't the domes properly maintained? And if all of the domes were never co uh, constructed, why are those domes no longer available for use? Why weren't they put into use? Why isn't the... Why wasn't the report produced by the Shantytown Task Force? Now, so, so I see you mentioned the Shantytown Task Force. Yeah. That was decommissioned, I assumed. And I see that in the news, they said they, they recommissioned the Shantytown Task Force. Now, I'm not sure what that means, but the recommissioning of it, is it starting from scratch or the persons who were in it before? But of course, you know, they had FM personnel. They had um, uh, folks in charge of the Shantytown mm -hmm. Task force who's interviewing persons to see who all are there, who all have status and varying degrees, or what type of the conditions of the house, etc. And so recently, it has been recommissioned. 
I'm not sure what that recommission means mm -hmm. and, and, and how does that uh, impact the last work of the last mm -hmm. commission. Like, are you going to start all over again? I think they can start all over again. And if they start all over again, they got to go house to house to house doing a census, right? And Surely they're going to piggyback on the census that was just done and the, and the an ancillary uh, data collection that's taking place to support the initial census. But there's, there's new houses now, Baron. There's, there's scores of new houses. So they, and, they, and they built all over the place. They got to start from scratch. You got to start from house number one, which is at the gate of the entrance, and then go in that circle until you, until you get to all 400 odd houses and come back and say, okay, I know how much house is here. But not there's a call on the line. There's a call on the line already? Yeah, yeah. But I I'm want, just letting you know. I, see, I, I want to think, right, once upon a time, the last Shantytown Commission took pictures to say, well, these are the houses here already, and these are in contrast to these are the houses just show well, pop so up. So they, they should still have those pictures. But one would assume that then the, res, the response of demolishing them would be sooner or immediate, since no, you just build them automatically. The issue, I don't think the issue in... What would cause a delay in demolition? I don't think that issue is the interrogation into who should be there. Mm -hmm. I think the real issue is no matter who is there, mm -hmm. you have to have a plan for them. For sure. If they are, if if you find undocumented migrants in the shanty town, you have to hold them. You have to detain them. What? And you have to house them until they're processed. Can you get explained and to me? repatriate. Aaron, you if make, you find, you're not making any sense, Aaron. If you find, Aaron, you're making no sense. If you find irregular or undocumented migrants uh -huh. in a shanty town, uh -huh. the state who says that they're going to repatriate them, they have to detain them. They have to house them while they are being detained until they are repatriated. What? That's cost. That's cost. For documented migrants, right? No, we're still talking about the persons who are undocumented that we can't just tell them move? And you're just saying that we have to do the whole process of detaining and doing the immigration... Well, I mean, why would, you, why would you just tell them to move? It's almost like you... Oh no, Mr. Nuri. You be, can't just kick them this, out of the shanty this town. This could be a two-year thing. You need to detain... If they are irregular migrants, right? Then you detain them. In that period of detainment then the migrant has an opportunity to say, hey, I would like to claim a refugee status. We do no I'd refugee like to, status. I'd like to claim for asylum. We do no asylum. all of those things. But you still have to process it. They still have a right to make the claim, and you still have to process the claim. You can't just put them on a boat and send them back to <laughs> Haiti. Uh, the same, what, 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 we, what they, they prom uh, Let me go to the call. Yeah, yeah. Let me go to the call because, Aaron, you're talking something different. And, I, I, and now you applying the law, and this don't seem the thing what Bohemian's talking about. But go ahead, caller. Caller, can you hear me? Caller, girl, once. Yes, um, I'm calling in reference with the 22 to 5 vote for a left um, against the select, select committee. committee. Yes, sir. That's what we need to be focusing on, you know. Yeah, I, I, I'm CA. You know, let me share you something. Successive governments over the years have created this corruption in respect to those shanty towns. As a matter of fact, if you or I want to engage in bringing someone in this Bahamas on a work permit, one of the primary questions they would ask you, do you have somewhere for these individuals to live? If it be a live-in or if you're bringing a gardener, it's mandatory that you need some place for these people to live. So the mere fact that we are talking about shanty towns is corruption. It's blatant corruption. And what we need to do now, the Prime Minister is talking about engaging, or um, uh, uh, what he is saying is that if they were to demolish these shanty towns, then they would have to run into another crisis in terms of finding um, houses for people to live in. That, that don't make no sense. Why doesn't that it make, don't make no why sense. Why doesn't it make any sense, caller? It makes no sense. Tell and me he knows why. it. Hold on, pause. And he's being pause. totally disingenuous. I can tell you now, Aaron. Let me tell you. We have scores, maybe tens of thousands of persons in this country on frivolous work permits. Work permits that make no sense. We know, we know that selling of work permits is big business in the Bahamas. Call and I that, is why the, that is why the Prime Minister refused for the Bahamian people 
the sea, the mess that they have created. Caller, the caller, caller. Yes. Are you still haven't yes. you haven't responded to the question that I asked you? What though? question you asked me? Man, caller, come on, man. Ask caller. the question again. I want to engage caller. the caller. You're going to bully. Don't bully the caller. I'm not, call no, it. I'm not. Call I'm not she will know why you think it's uh, it's not it was irresponsible for the government to bulldoze the houses. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not what the question was. The question was speaking to this idea of housing, yes. right? And and why is it ridiculous that's that, the, same the, thing that I said. the government would have to find housing for people? Yeah, I just changed the wording. That's the same thing I said. But okay, the call it going. Let's, 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 go ahead. Yeah, let's, I want you to hash it out. It, I want right? you to hash it out. The government has an obligation to ensure that people are living in government-approved housing. That doesn't mean the government has to provide the housing for them per se, but there needs to be, there needs to be a process to ensure that everybody is living in housing that is approved. It's safe. It's adequate. It's up to the housing codes. And I say, Aaron, to if you? If the people, hold on, if there are people who are undocumented, irregular migrants in shanty towns, from the period that they are detained to the period that they are repatriated and land in the country of original jurisdiction, the government has a duty of care for them. I could. Oh, the, this thing that you put in there, I loved it. The idea that you would find somebody in a shanty town, mm -hmm. determine that they are irregular status, and then tell them, well, you can't live here, you got to go live somewhere else. That don't make any sense. Well, I'm with the same storm so. But, Aaron, there's a housing crisis on Abaco. That's the point. So, if there is a housing crisis on Abaco where legitimate Bahamians who, who want to come there to work, who want to migrate, who want to go and even rent, uh, uh, housing or even hotel. If there's a shortage, how can you have these people move out of the shanty town? Especially when we found out that there is a ninety percent from the last commission, ninety percent of the persons living in the shanty towns in Abaco, ninety percent. That means the majority. Oh, let's call them all. Let's call them all. Uh, either Bahamian or have some kind of legal status to be in the Bahamas. Just, 90, listen, just, but, again, but, just use all. All of them live in there. Know, I don't know why you're trying to bait me with my own point. This, is the, thing, this is the thing I've been saying for weeks and weeks now. Mm -hmm. We don't have a migrant crisis. We have a housing crisis. If the majority of people living in shanty towns are either Bahamians or have legal status, the problem with the shanty town is not a migrant problem. The problem is a lack of housing problem, a lack of affordable housing problem, a lack of housing ma inventory management problem, where the majority of your homes are being held for tourists, for foreigners, for people who don't live here, for Airbnbs. It is a housing crisis, and the government has found itself in a particular situation, which is why it makes no sense, which is why it makes no sense that the Shantytown Task Force would have been um, put on pause in the interim while you're waiting for the injunction. Mm. Surely the Shantytown Task Force should have been working on solutions and strategies hand in hand with the government to ensure that at the moment that the injunction was lifted, they could put into play the policies developed by the task force and approved by cabinet. That's good speculation, then, Aaron. Do you, as a call, do you believe? Okay, you know that the, the, the commission was put on on, on on suspended for a minute, right? Yeah. So, do you believe any protocols have been worked on during this break, this 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 break in time? Do you personally believe anything was being done? No, not with the language that uh, the minister says used talking about reconvening the committee, right? And especially with the political culture and what you pointed out, it's most likely that that committee had been shut down because as the political convention is, if you've been appointed by one administration, when the next administration comes in, it's, it's time to go home. The next question before I go to caller. So when you say reconvene the commission, the Shantytown Commission, is that mean that you got a Popula pop what, what, populate the commission again bra with brand new people and have them have a learning curve and the time. It appears as so. It, is, it appears as such. So we got to wait about two months just for them to get <laughs> get situated. Then they start their work. 
listen, if I tell you the, the women's softball team couldn't go to the Caribbean tournament that only happens like every seven, like Brigadoon, you know mm -hmm. the movie Brigadoon? Mm -hmm. Only happens every hundred years. Yeah. They couldn't go to the tournament mm -hmm. because they had not constituted the coaches' uh, uh, um, platform. They had not done this, they had not done that. It's political, this is the political culture. Yeah. The real question is, is the crisis migrants, is the cr undocumented migrants, is it a housing crisis, or is the crisis that the government can't move at the pace necessary for to govern. Let's go to the callers. This text says, the PM says one thing to the international community about illegal immigrants and another thing to the Bahamian people. Which one is it, Mr. Davis? Now, look here, in there, that's a, that's a great place to start. I want to say to the text that that's what it appears like on the surface, right? Like the prime minister is saying to the Bahamian people, we are acting right now. We on it. We locking up people as we speak. To the international community, oh, there's no, don't expect action right away. But, but read with a, a, a more critical mind and realize what the government is saying is, we don't intend, it appears to me, what I infer from their statements, we don't intend to eradicate wholesale shanty towns. Mm -hmm. We intend on finding out who should be here and who shouldn't and allowing them to live there as long as we can so we don't have to take on any burden mm -hmm. of ensuring that they have access to proper housing. Let's go to the caller. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear us? Caller, can you hear us? Caller, you going once. Caller, you going twice. Next caller, can you hear us? Morning to you again. Good morning. Go ahead. You know, we got disconnected. You know, um, see, I only want to make a point for two minutes. Aaron is repeatedly, Aaron uh, co continuously on this radio talking about we don't have a migrant crisis. But our statistics, you don't have no statistics. But she's still repeating this thing, hoping that it will make sense one day that we don't have a we don't have a migrant crisis. Aaron don't have the document. She don't have no statistics on how many persons we have here on work permit for me. Caller, I, I, I yeah. forgive me for interjecting. It was not Aaron who said we're not having a crisis now. It was a government, <laughs> and Erin uh, questioned I, I've it. I've never said She's that we're not having a crisis, She man. questioned whether what? the government is you right by saying... Erin said we have a high swing crisis, but we don't have a migrant crisis. That's the answer. Okay, I see now, what we're my point Okay, is, but call a call call pause. Pa call a pause, yeah. pause. Okay. Let's have a conversation, okay? Okay, fair enough. Let's go. Pause. What I have been pointing out to the Bahamian people is from the government's perspective, they don't have a migrant crisis crisis. From the government's perspective, they have a labor crisis mm -hmm. and they have a housing crisis because they don't have enough local labor to drive the pace of construction that they want and they don't have enough approved housing to house the people who are working for lower than acceptable wages. But that is not true. The government, isn't being, the, the government is being totally disingenuous by saying that we but have a my government. Crisis. That's why they have to. You heard us, man. That's why I've been trying yes. to have the yes. conversation yes. for weeks, yes. caller. But, yes. it, but as opposed to listening to the critical interrogation, you guys yes. continue to attack the thing that you don't understand. But you wouldn't give me a chance to complete a friend of thought before you interject and interrupt. I'll, I'll, you I'll, I'll stop. And you go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Okay, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying, CA. We all know when you check the bed at PMH, it's lacking. We don't have to fix it. When you check the classroom space, we are lacking. It's insufficient. So what is that saying to us? This bottleneck thing, this thing has reached the bottleneck now in terms of how many persons we have here on work permit. Aaron doesn't know that. And tell, but the past, but the, uh, uh, the public accounts committee, when they called for that select committee, that would have outlined everything to us. We would have known everything. Most persons who on work permit, you know, most folks in Horn or who are holding work permit don't have no place for these people to live, you know. That work permit is their business. The selling of these documents is their business. That is why it was so disingenuous for the, for, for the House of Assembly to vote against it. Should we, it um, you wouldn't want to know living in a developed country or working towards a developed country. You wouldn't want to know how many persons we have here um, from one neighbors from the South. You know, according to the UN, according to the United Nations, any time any nationality exceeds more than 
of the local population, it becomes a national security issue. Okay, caller, let me have Aaron respond to that. And I appreciate it. I can talk about this 15% you call them a national security issue. But thanks very much, caller. Um, I don't think Haitians make up 15% of our population at all. I think our population is 90% black, as we know, mm -hmm. right? And the rest is between white, Asian, and whatever else it is. But the majority of us still are behemoths, either second, third generation behemoths, but definitely behemoths. So I, the fear of, of saying that we are being inundated and our culture is being influenced, I, I don't think is real. But let's go to the next caller. I mean, I... You Right there, where you're gonna let me respond to okay. the person? To the no. You want to respond still? Go ahead. Go ahead. Of, of course, I want to respond. But, but I, pause. I'm not, I'm not responding to the hysteria. I'm responding to the aspersions that arise. Go ahead. Because people are not listening. Go ahead, Aaron. Go A ahead. Part of the reason why we're here is because people are not listening. If we continue to bring hysteria to the conversation, the government will continue to take advantage of your inability to maintain a coherent conversation. Or discourse. The second point is, as journalists, as the people like to call us, as no, media personalities, no we have a responsibility still to maintain the airwaves. You don't call, you could call Cecil's show and do that, but you don't call my show to just rant. You call my show uh -huh. to have a conversation. The second point. But you got to be nice to the callers, though, Aaron. I, am, I meet the callers with exactly what they meet me with. Look at that. Look at God. Look at the nice. Christian message. You get the very same <laughs> energy that you bring to me on the radio. But we have a responsibility to, to them too, though. You got to be nice, you know, in, 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 the, in the, the exchange, no? I'm nice to people who don't come on the airwaves and call me a liar. I, I mean, I don't understand why y'all think that that's a common or acceptable part of public discourse. Perhaps y'all letting the political culture take over. Uh -huh. Perhaps y'all think because politicians let each other call, them, call each other liars all the time, it's okay. Uh -huh. But that brings us right back to the point. What I wanted to ask the caller Accent. was... Uh -huh. After the initial question that he refused to answer, Accent. he refused to take account of his own words, right? Mm -hmm. What I wanted to ask him is, what is it that makes you think that a select committee on immigration was going to produce any results? What is it? You don't believe it's going to produce the, any results? Has any committee, has any committee in parliament produced any results in the last five years? Touche. Look at you. It is the 22nd of February, and we have not heard a word from the Public Disclosures Committee. In fact, you're trying to convince me that a select committee on immigration would have achieved the thing that the task force that was in play for years, that Minnis called a snap election to immediately halt their work, was going to produce anything more than, than it was produced in that time? It's time to preach now. Let's go to the next caller. <laughs> caller, producer, patch the caller through. Eric no, what I, no, what I'm trying to... Patch the caller through. What truth. I'm trying to do is maintain a coherent <laughs> I dialogue on important issues. I understand. But if we allow people with their you history, onyx, it. and hysterics, Let the, the government will themselves. continue to take advantage of us. But I understand. This is why we have a different type of conversation on our show. But go ahead, caller. Are you there? Good morning, CA. Good morning, Aaron. How you doing, man? Uh, right here, boy. Enjoying this, this back and forth conversation. Very stimulating. Listen, Aaron is on to something here. The, the previous caller is also, was also on to something. Here's the known facts out here in the public domain. First and foremost, we, we, the Bahamian people, do not believe that the government is as transparent as they should be as it pertains to information coming into the public domain. That, that's why a lot of Bahamians uh, have to speculate, uh, watch mm -hmm. that word very carefully, speculate on what's going on. Yeah. The, the, the accuracy of the statistics on how many persons are here in this country, that's always going to be in the public domain. You know why? Because missed opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I understand that the Bahamas signed on the treaties, but does the treaty prevent a government? From, from taking accurate account and accurate numbers of persons in this country, regardless of whether they're illegal or not. Now, see, that is a bone of contention here in the public domain. And the previous administration had, even though they had, we were in, that, in the middle of that crisis, they could have still taken information of persons who were in that stadium, persons who were at, at the old Bahamas Academy building, persons who were at Pontiana Arena, 
these names should have been taken. And if they were legally in this country, the Department of Immigration should have that information at, their, at, their, at the tip of their fingers, even though a lot of them claimed that they lost their documents. Jeff, so there Jeff, is no excuse. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff you talk yeah. in the past. We know they should, what they should have done a long time. It's now, now what we're doing we now. now it's, that's where we are now. But you could start that right now. That's the point. Hold on. The point is this. Right now, the government, just the way it created a special economic zone, mm -hmm. it could create a special geographic zone with, with, with special temporary measures where we monitor the, everybody that comes in. We take your ID. We write that, all your information. You sound like Minnis. Minnis said that this other day. <laughs> you sound like it is, it is for the purposes of not just protecting the island, not just protecting the residents of the island, but projecting your future needs. I mean, I don't even know why we have to explain this. This mm. is this is. But here's the thing: from the moment that you saw it was not happening, and from the moment I saw it was not happening, I raised the alarm, mm -hmm. and other people did not raise the alarm. And the question is why? Why are these very basic common sense things not being brought? to the fore by party members, by party supporters, by community members. You're talking about the and that is, and, and you asked a very salient question, Aaron. You know why? Because they believe that the Bahamian people are still asleep. Mm. They believe that we are n our eyes are not open and awoke to what's going on in the country. They believe that we are so focused on remaining corrupt instead of trying to fix this country. The bottom line here is, and I'll close on this point, the bottom line here is right down to the movement of people throughout our islands. Let's say all these people are on work permits. We should know every moment, they, every moment, movement they make on this island, whether they left from Nassau to go to Grand Bahama, to go to Abaco or wherever. Guess what? That paper trail should be there to show that, look, this person is here. We know where they are. So when it comes down to the time, that they need to go back home or they need, or their work permit, for instance, uh, has expired, we know where they are to go and get them and get them back out of the country. Uh, my last point here very quickly. Do, is there an expiry date on these work permits and how many times a person can uh, apply for a work permit to be here? Of course. Is there an Jeff. expiry date? Well, I mean, there's, an ex there's an expiry date on the work permit, but there's no expiry date on the number of times you could apply to have it renewed. I think questions have been raised about whether at a certain point the question should be put to a, uh, a laborer. Listen, this is you've been coming back and forth for 10, 15 years now. The same employer, no complaints, no criminal record. You should then invite them to say, listen, do you want a different type of status? If they hit... See, that's why this links to your sovereign wealth fund conversation, mm -hmm. criteria for citizenship, criteria for residency. What is it that we expect from you? And if somebody has been working here over 20 years, contributing to the country, mm -hmm. no criminal record, mm -hmm. good standing in the community, at some point the government should say, hey, we inviting you to ask the question, do you want to become a permanent resident? I agree. Let's read this guy and go to the next um, uh, caller, right? Mash him up, Aaron. We have to speak with sense and not emotion. That's the only way to get to the root of this immigration problem. I'm with you, Aaron. And let's go to the next caller there, producer. Can you hear me there, caller? Caller, can you hear me? Caller, girl, once. Caller. Hello. Go ahead, there, caller. Hi, yes. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Listen, um, Aaron... You are making some very good points, and I appreciate the points you're making, mm -hmm. also you, Mr. Nuri. But um, we do have a crisis here in this country. The first thing we need to identify is the standard of life that we want to live in this country with respect to housing, okay? Now, either we're going to become like Haiti, and we're going to have so power homes where we just knock up anything and live in it, um, or whether we're going to build civilized, sensible house, okay? We are the third world country, so they call us. We're the last world. There's no world coming after us, so we have to get this thing right, man, okay? We have to decide the standard of living that we're going to have here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, okay? And we have to be serious about it. You cannot accept um, shanty towns popping up all over your country 
and everything. If you're trying to live in a first world country, uh, well, like I said, we're third world, so we're the last world. But if you're trying to live in this country and everything, you cannot have shocks and stuff coming up all over the place when you have a standard of living already identified. So definitely the government needs to clean up these shanty towns. The government definitely needs to get proper housing for people. And definitely we need a national, um, a, a real national card that determine whether you are a citizen, a resident, or whatever, okay, across the board. Thank you very much, Colin. I appreciate and, it. Until we, until we do that, Mr. Nui, until we come up with a national card that determines whether you are a citizen or a permanent resident or a regular resident, I mean, we're going to have this problem. We have to identify who's in the country. Okay. Um, and, and before we go to the next caller and read the text, it says, let's go, uh, let it go, Aaron, we love you. Or let's go, Aaron, we love you. But... The caller mentioned the national identification card. Mm -hmm. I know in Jamaica they tried to have yeah. a national uh, uh, like, um, national yeah. card. And, of course, the, the intellectuals there sued the government. And, and we have the similar um, uh, constitution. And they brought it up with constitutional issues, right? But we spoke about the Sovereign Wealth Fund, right? Uh -huh. And those who are interested in receiving the benefits of a sovereign wealth fund would need an ID card to get the benefits, mm -hmm. right? And they found that citizens were willing to embrace that in order to get access to their, to their sovereign wealth right. fund. But this administration decided we don't want no sovereign wealth fund, right? They, they rescinded it mm -hmm. and said we are going to have an investment fund instead where the Bohemian people are not vested However, they will get the benefits of it. So I had this need for a national, uh, a national card, mm -hmm. right? But without having a sovereign wealth fund attached to it, I don't think that it's constitutional, technically. And, well, I, no, and that's I mean, where we have the constitutional... Because uh, you can't force me to carry ID. See, no, no, this, 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 is, uh, this is very, this very interesting question, right? Because this is uh, uh, um, the difference between like anonymity, the right to anonymity versus the right to privacy, right? Uh, and... It is fascinating. See, a passport can't be a national ID. It can't be mandatory, required for engaging in government business because I don't need to have a passport to be a Bahamian. I don't, in fact, I don't need a passport um, to be a Bahamian. I don't need to leave the country to be a Bahamian. So I don't need a passport. There you you can't demand that of me. Mm -hmm. A driver's license, same way. A driver's license can't be a national ID because I don't need to drive to be a citizen or to gain access to the benefits of the Commonwealth. And the same thing with the national insurance card, because non-Bahamians have national insurance cards too, yes. right? Yes. Right, so it can't necessarily be that unless it determines your status on it. But so this is what conversations need to be about. So mm -hmm. the Bahamian people understand why we don't have a national idea and, at this and, present and, time. And, and the, the conversation, we go to the caller right now, the conversation is, in, is important. I think what we miss is this. The issues that we're talking about would not exist if we focused on solving those issues for Bahamians first, mm -hmm. right? This is what we'll be talking about. There is a labor crisis. There's a shortage of local labor in the country. If you fix that problem with Bahamians, skills building, it right? It will be a labor crisis, even if you fix it. We short. We need more people with labor skills. The next thing, we got an economic crisis where the government, whether it's telling you clearly or not, cannot maintain the economy moving at the pace it is or improve the pace or create an environment where you could live the lifestyle you're accustomed to without adding about a million people. we got to take a break. We have some callers there. We're going to take you on the other side of the call. I'm going to read this text. It says, can you explain to me, Aaron, how we had two Haitian men were attacked by immigration, allegedly attacked by immigration officers, were, had work permits uh, for B2B be barbers? That's strange. Anyway, we'll be right back. Guardian Marshall. business is in store, on the go, or both. Let Fidelity work with you to maximize your customer's payment options with a fixed or mobile terminal so that you never miss a sale. It's safer than cash and more convenient so that you can take your business anywhere. For details, contact a business development officer today at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport or visit our website at fidelitygroup.com.
Why? Why you look so mash up, like clothes at the washer? No, no, boy. Just a hard day, boy. Hard day? What happened? The breakfast lady ran out of tuna and gritty. We need to start joking about everything, you know. This serious, boy. This real serious, boy. Boy, what's serious? Tell me. All right, well, today, boss gave his boy one big, big contract. And nobody else get a chance and nobody say nothing. Boy, you know that ain't right. You know government contracts ain't supposed to go that way. Yeah, but nobody saying nothing. Boss man just tell people to sign the papers. Then he sent me to meet his boy down to and collect this envelope. You need to tell somebody. You need to become a whistleblower. You know he's a real man, but I never blow no whistle. I be drunk all my life and junk. No way. A whistleblower is someone who tells people what they see when they see something wrong happening at work. But I ain't no whistleblower and I ain't no snitch. I still wait there, you know. But ain't nobody gonna know it's you. All you gotta do is call Crime Stoppers or you could text them from inside the Crack Crime Bahamas app. They don't ask about you. And your call goes straight through to Miami. So nobody know you is. And if you text, your message get mixed up like Kong Salad. Call 328-8477 from Nassau or 242-300-8477 from the Family Islands. Get your Carifta tickets. The 58 Carifta Rifta Games is coming April 7th to April 10th. Tickets are on sale now online at carifta50.com or at the Thomas A. Robertson National Stadium, Western Grand Entrance. For more details, email tickets at carifta50.com or call 605-4051. Wednesday, March 8th, 2023 is International Women's Day, a day celebrated globally as a focal point in the women's rights movement bringing attention to issues such as gender equality, reproductive rights, and violence and abuse against women. Equity isn't just a nice to have, it's a must have. A focus on gender equity needs to be a part of every society's DNA, and it's critical to understand the difference between equity and equality. Guardian Media wants all Bahamians to truly embrace equity. It's not just something we should say, not something to just write about. It's something we need to think about, know and embrace. It's what we should believe in, unconditionally. This International Women's Day, Guardian Media wants you and your company to embrace equity. Guardian Media wants you to celebrate the women in your organization this International Women's Day by placing them in an ad in our International Women's Day supplement. For more information, call 302-2300, 302-2300, or call your account executive. International Women's Day. Wednesday, March 8th, 2023. Embrace equity. Welcome back to Garden Radio AM with C.A. Nuri and Aaron Green. Of course, we have an A Guardian AM and on the clock mashup day where we express the views on, 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 on pulsating topics. Of course, we're talking about immigration, right? And of course, Aaron has a views on how the government should operate. And then I was saying that there are different views. I'm not saying anything is right or wrong. Right, but this is this a varying rules, and we have to accommodate the varying rules, and then we have a duty bound to after we accommodate it to explain it to say, well, this I hear you, I hear what you're saying, but that's not necessary show necessary what it is, and I would correct you after you express your views, and that's where we have an exchange. But let's go straight to the caller first, and then we'll have Aaron respond to that. Go ahead, caller. Hey, what's up, my brother? Raise your man. Hey, listen, you know. In reference to the Shanti towns, right? Mm -hmm. Before we even get to the Shanti towns, let's look at the laws these people are breaking. Let's look at the illegal entry or the illegal landing or the overstaying of the, or, or the, or the, 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 the time they were allowed to stay. The illegal housing structures with no approval from BEC, uh, from, uh, from the Ministry of Works, uh, no permission to build on Crown land. Uh, let's look at uh, stealing power. You got no permission from BEC, so that means you're stealing power. You know, when we look at the, at the environmental laws, no proper septic and, and sewage uh, uh, to, to, you know, uh, um, and, uh, facilities in place. You know, and, you know, if, if, if you're saying most of these people in the shanty towns have some kind of status, let's say they are on work permit. In order to get a work permit, you have to prove that you got uh, adequate housing. That should be the first thing they, uh, one of the first things they look at. 
So if these if they if these if these people are work permit, right off the bat they they again that's a violation of the law. So before we even get to the immigration problem or the or the immigration issue in the, in the Shanty Towns, let's look at the laws that these people are breaking. And I appreciate that caller. And I can have Aaron exp- explain that to you. The issue is not whether they're breaking the law or no. We have courts for that, right? These people have to be brought up in the courts, and these are procedures for that. The issue we're dealing with is the definition of what is a crisis. Erin uh, expressed that she believes that there's not necessarily immigration crisis, but a housing crisis and an economic crisis, which fuels, uh, which fuels an immigration crisis. It comes step one, two. No, and then t- that's not what I say so at go ahead. all. Go what ahead. I'm saying to the Bahamian people is y'all are not paying attention to what is happening in front of you. Don't get caught up in the histrionics of it, right? Don't get caught up in it in, in I'm right and the government is wrong. Look at the reality of it. Mm-hmm. The economists have said to maintain the momentum of the economy and to maintain the lifestyle that Bahamians have become accustomed to, we need at least a million more citizens to live this big life that we want to live. The Construction Association president tell you that 65, roughly 65% of the laborers in that industry are Creole speaking. Bahamians tell you they find it tremendously difficult to find a consistent, professional, affordable Bahamian laborer or Bahamian contractor or Bahamian construction team, right? What I'm saying to you is that from the government's perspective, there is no migrant crisis. Now, I can't tell you that the government is allowing these people or inviting these people to come to the country. What I'm telling you is their presence in the country solves a problem for them, which is a labor shortage, right? So you're saying that we have a labor shortage problem. What I'm saying is that we need a more critical lens If you think of it as simply a migration problem, not only will you never solve it, but you will never compel your government to act in the ways that you want to act. But further to that, right, if we ensure that every Bahamian, regardless of class or income status, how much money they make, could access affordable, standardized housing, there would be no shantytown issue. Because we don't care about how poor Bahamians live, shantytowns persist, and irregular migrants take advantage of that. Let's get to the call-up. Because I hear what you're saying, right? But in that narrative, what you're saying, it means it suggests that we pause and do nothing. And that is what no. I, where I think that Bahamians are finding it frustrating, saying, I hear all that words, but that you're not addressing the point is, we have an immigration problem, I want you to do something. We have a housing crisis, I want but you to do something. What the government is showing you is they can't do something. If they do what they said they were going to do on Sunday night, which is eradicate and remove all, remove all of the irregular migrants from the country, construction will shut down. If you, if you repatriate people because they're not living in standard housing, labor, construction, the country will shut down. I hear that point. Go ahead, call it. Producer Patrick, call it through. Because Aaron just hinted that if we basically solve the, the shantytown problem, construction will cease instead of... No, no, no. That's not what I said. You understand what, no, what I said was if we just simply repatriate every irregular migrant... Right? Okay. We find in the shanty town, and then we repatriate every documented migrant. But we ain't talking about documented. We are people. talking about documented people, because this is the point. The government said, if you are a regular, if you are a documented migrant living in the shanty town, right, you are responsible for finding your own housing, and if you don't, you will be repatriated. So if we repatriate all of the illegal migrants in the shanty town. And then we repatriate all of the documented migrants who were unable to find approved housing, both sets. Things will shut down. If you force the Bahamians who are living in the shantytown to go and find someplace else to live, despite them not being able to find anything, 
the country is going to shut down because a large percentage of your people will be in crisis and not be able to go to work. Producer, pass the caller through. Go ahead, caller. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Morning, Aaron. Morning, morning. Um, I have a question, right? Um, let's just say that the government finds those who are uh, illegal and irregular right. in the shanty town, right. and then those who are legal and have work permit, and they keep they keep those there who have work permit. Um, let's say they can't find housing, and they allow them to live or on those properties. Um, will the government be charging them um, um, lease or, or, or rent or, or something for living on those on those um, um, properties? Those Most of them are properties? private lands, by the way. They're not necessarily government. All land. of them. Most all of them. Of, all of these shanty towns on private land. Well, most of them. Most of them are on private land. So those that, that build their homes in the middle of nowhere is, is still someone's property? Well, well I would be specific on which land you're talking about. But most of them are private land. Okay, so the, 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 the mud in, in Abaco was, is private land. Um, the farm was private land. Was the mud in Pigeon P? Because they, 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 they swamp I, areas, eh? Some of well, that's them. cleared now. That's cleared now, but I, 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 I do not know. I would have to go and check on that. Okay, so but let's no one's say, living there now. Okay, let's just say for those who, who are on government property. Anyway, this has been Guardian Radio AM, and of course, on the clock mashup Wednesdays. It got spicy, it got a little emotional here and there, but remember that we all friends, right? I need to buy Aaron a new headset. Have a wonderful day. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. This is the Guardian News 96.9.